Welcome everyone, it is I, Brother Scott, bringing you another Daily Baptist Bread devotional, amen. And today is Monday, September 9th, 2019. And yes, as I said before, it is time for the Baptist Bread Daily Devotional. And I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world and he is the only one that can wash away your sin and give you eternal life. Amen. So hope you'll trust him today. All right. So the topic for today is titled, What is Home? Question mark. What is Home? And the verse is from John 20, verse 10, where it says, Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. John 20, verse 10. All right. And the... Uh, Author for today is R.G., that is short for R.G., that is, let us go down here to find his name, where is it, I know it's got, okay, so uh, his name is Rick Grave Gravely, and he is the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Roseville, Georgia, amen, so that is uh, Brother Rick, and uh, he is from Georgia, uh, pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Georgia, and we will start off where he says, Several years ago, a monthly magazine sent out 1,000 inquiries asking, What is home? They received 800 replies and chose six gems of, which, uh, which the, of what they considered a definition of a real home. So here's what the magazine said uh, after these people uh, sent in replies. So number one, home, a world of strife shut out, a world of love shut in. Number two, home, the place where the small are great and the great are small. Three, home, the father's kingdom, the mother's world, the child's paradise. Four, home again, the place where we grumble the most and are trusted the best. <laughs> Number five, home, the center of affections round which our hearts best which, uh, wishes twine. Six, home, the place where our stomachs get three square meals daily and our hearts a thousand. So those are the six uh, uh, gems that he... Uh, put on here that they consider definitions of a real home and then he continues on what is home to you friend so what is home to you home to me he says is where christ leads me where the spirit blesses us and where our lo uh, loved ones visit us amen that's a good uh, definition of home if you're in a christ-like home a christian home that's what it uh, should be a home where christ leads leads us and where the Spirit blesses us, and where our loved ones visit us. Amen. And uh, much more. Many, many blessings from the Lord. Amen. So, if you're living in a Christian home, that should be what it should be about, about Christ, and and uh, raising your family up to be Christ-like, and amen. So, he continues on, I have traveled many places, he says, and seen a lot of amazing scenery. But my favorite place to go is home. Amen. That's good. Uh, we have heard it said so many times that there is no place like home. One of these days, we will make it to our final home. Amen. Home in heaven with Jesus. Hallelujah. Our real home. Our eternal home. What a day that will be when all the family has come home forever to stay. When we gather around God's table and worship our Savior. Oh, happy homecoming day. Amen. Exclamation point. Oh, happy homecoming day. That will be when Jesus gathers us together in heavenly places to be with him in our heavenly home. Amen. So, one day we will be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord as First Thessalonians Chapter 14 talks about how we'll be caught up to be with him forever in the air in the rapture. Or if we uh, get called up first before we pass from this earth. Otherwise, we will uh, uh, 
pass from this earth and get our glorified bodies, amen, and be with Jesus, hallelujah. So, looking forward to that. Perhaps it'll be today. All right. So that was What is Home? And then he gave the six uh, definitions here of what uh, people in the world say home is and then what we should consider home is and what he says home is to him and what it should be to all of us. And one day we'll go be with Jesus in our heavenly home. All right. Well, now that we're done with the devotional, let us jump into 2 Corinthians chapter 2. That'll be our morning Bible reading, and then we'll be our do our proverb today also. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2 is where we'll start for our Bible reading. So if you have your Bible, please turn it open and follow along. And if you're somewhere where you can't get to your Bible, like at work or driving, just listen along and you can go back later and get notes if you're a note taker. Amen. All right, so chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians. Corinthians. I was in 1 Corinthians. Let us go to 2 Corinthians. All right. We will get there. All right. So 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1 says, But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad, but the same which is made sorry by me? And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I come, or when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. But if any have caused grief, he hath not grieved me, but in part, that I may not uh, overcharge you all. Sufficient to, uh, sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was inflicted of many. <clears throat> so that contrary uh, wise, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would confirm your love toward him. For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgave, forgave it for your sakes, forgave I it in the person of Christ, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right. Furthermore, when I came to Tro uh, Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I had uh, because I found not Titus my brother, but taking my leave of them. I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be to God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the uh, savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as um, as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Amen. So there you have it. That was chapter 2 of Second Corinthians. And we are finished with that uh, Bible reading, and now let us go into the proverb for today. Amen? So let's read today's proverb, and it will be Proverbs chapter 9, on this ninth day of September. So let us get into it. Alright, so chapter 9 of Proverbs, verse 1 says, Wisdom hath builded her house, she hath hewn out her seven pillars, she hath killed her beasts, 
she hath mingled her wine, she hath uh, also furnished her table, she hath set forth her maidens, she crieth upon the highest places of the city, Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish, and live, and go in the way of understanding. Amen. He that reproveth a scorner getteth him to himself shame, and he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner, uh, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is, right now, is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself, but if thou uh, scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing, for she sitteth at the door of her house, on a seat in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, and as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Wow, so don't go to a foolish woman, because a foolish woman is clamorous. So that talks about a foolish woman right there. All right, well, that is the end of Proverbs chapter 9, and our reading for today. Amen. So, hope you'll go back and listen to the entirety of this if you're just getting on here. And I'm um, going to wrap this up for today. So, thank you all for joining me. And, again, we just went over the topic on what is home. And I gave you six uh, gems that he put uh, that was uh, considered a definition of a real home. And then he gave his definition of what home should be and his definition to him and it should be to all of us is home to him and it should be to all of us is where Christ leads us where the spirit blesses us and where our loved ones visit us amen and one day we'll be going home to be with Jesus amen so hope you're looking forward to that day so keep looking up keep looking up I mean we got to keep witnessing and going about our lives on this earth and but uh we can rejoice knowing that Jesus will one day catch us up in the air to be with him forever and ever. Amen. And while we're here on earth, we need to keep going out there and telling people about Jesus and telling them, uh, warning them, uh, shouting out the warning that uh, Jesus saves and that their souls are perishing in their sin if they don't trust Jesus and that they're on their way to hellfire if they don't trust Jesus and need to tell them the truth. Amen. All right, so let's go out there and do it while we're on this earth, because that's what we're commanded to do. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. All right, well, this is Brother Scott signing off for today. And Lord willing, I'll be back sometime tomorrow to give you the topic of the closing prayer of John. Not sure why they waited so long to uh, put that one in there but we already did the closing prayers of Matthew through Luke and now we will jump into the closing prayer of John tomorrow amen so hope you'll tune in for that all right so we'll get the closing prayer of John all right well until next time this is brother Scott signing off and goodbye for now